You guys, in less than a month, it will be the 62nd anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's space flight, marking the first time in human history that someone had orbited the Earth. This, of course, a significant achievement and a catalyst for what we know as our space industry today. This flight showed the world that it was possible to send a human being into space and return them safely back to Earth. And since 2001, people around the world have been celebrating an official Yuri's Night the celebration not only highlights the past achievement, but gets us excited for our future exploring the stars. Yuri's Night was co-founded by George and Loretta Whitesides. George once served as the chief space officer and longtime CEO of Virgin Galactic, and his wife Loretta, who was a future Virgin Galactic astronaut, decided to officially celebrate Yuri's flight, and it's an event that's really evolved over the last two decades. To get more background, I reached out to their executive director, Tim Bailey, who started getting involved with Yuri's Night pretty early on in 2004 when he met Loretta. And heard about this incredible opportunity to celebrate art and science and music and culture and passion all in the same place in the space industry. And I'd never encountered that anywhere before. I helped bring it out into its own 501c3. So now we're an independent nonprofit. Uh, and I've been with the organization ever since. Well, the theme this year is for all space kind. Playing on the TV show for all mankind, they decided to celebrate for all space kind. The event will also be live streamed from the California Science Center. It starts at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And like I said, the theme is for all space kind. I asked Tim Bailey why they chose this theme. Space Kind Foundation, why, why is it called the Space Kind Foundation? Well, if you think about the evolution of language, we started with mankind uh, and we've sort of gone to humankind. And we think about that as everybody that's on the planet. And we want to start thinking about space kind, the people that we're going to be as we move off of this planet and start going out to new worlds and space stations and living off this planet. Who do we want space kind to be? What type of people do we want to take? What type of culture do we want to take with us? And really developing that next generation of explorers to be the better version of humanity that we take with us to the stars. And I had planned to attend the kickoff party in Los Angeles at the California Science Center. It's April 8th. I had the car, the flight, the hotel booked. Unfortunately, yeah, breaking my leg broke those plans. <laughs> But I still want to tell you about the event because of the cause it's benefiting. We do have a Cosmic Odyssey scholarship that we give out every year. For the past two years, we've taken families that have been affected by pediatric cancer and sent them on all expense paid trips to family space camp for a weekend in Huntsville, Alabama at U.S. Space Camp. And this year we have an amazing silent auction that's going to have art, experiences, amazing things that you can buy on there to help fund that Cosmic Odyssey scholarship for families this year that are going to be going to space camp in July. So while you're having your amazing uh, Yuri's Night event at your house or at your university or at your local pub, you can also go online and bid through the end of April on some really incredible things that are going to be on there. It takes a lot of work to create Yuri's Night. Every year, over 300 ambassadors, staff, and volunteers from around the world work to make this global celebration happen. And the silent online auction runs from April 8th through April 30th. Some of those high profile items for auction include flown original art by Dr. Cyan Proctor, a Tim Dodd autographed Falcon 9 model, Get this, a replica spacesuit by Geordie's Rocketry, a James Webb Space Telescope replica wall mirror by Earthbound Martian Chris Rogers, and LifeShip will also be donating three of their moon kits for people to send their DNA to the moon. We are so excited this year at Yuri's Night LA, which is one of our two flagship parties we hold uh, in the US. We are gonna have NASA astronaut, Dr. Jessica Watkins. She was part of crew four. She was the first black woman to complete a long duration stay on the International Space Station. And she's in the running and could possibly be one of the Artemis astronauts that will be the first to go back to the moon. So she could be the first woman and the first person of color to walk on the surface of the moon. So we are having our minds blown uh, that she's able to join us there. In addition, we'll have tons of, of other celebrities and people from 
uh, across fandoms. So we'll have maybe some people from some uh, science fiction shows that you know, like Star Trek. We just had Gates McFadden, who plays Dr. Beverly Crusher, uh, confirm that she was going to be there. We have Dr. Chris Bosshausen, who went up on Blue Origin, who's going to come and be our guest astronaut DJ spinning for us along with a number of other exhibitors and interactive things to do. We have some uh, amazing artists that are gonna be bringing their art out to LA. So there's gonna be a ton of things for people to do, including dancing underneath Space Shuttle Endeavor. Now, if you're interested in attending the event, I will leave a link for tickets in the description. There are various levels, including student discounts, general admission, VIP, and VVIP tiers. You'll be able to party under the SS Endeavor as well as enjoy the silent disco. There's a Star Trek and Star Wars cosplay if you're a fan, and tickets sell out fast every year. So you wanna try and get them quickly if you're trying to go. So of course I'm bummed to not physically be at the Los Angeles event this year. There is always next year, but please note that next year, Yuri's Night LA moves to Austin for the Texas Total Solar Eclipse Festival. And luckily you can celebrate this space holiday anywhere you are. I wanted to share this announcement with you because there is a tremendous amount of work and resources that go into holding Yuri's Night parties. And I really appreciate that this is really for a good cause. So if you still wanna help give back, consider bidding on some of those great items up for auction. Yuri's Night is a time to celebrate everything that we are and everything that we bring with us to the stars, our art, our music, our science, our culture. And so really that could look like anything. We love seeing events around food, uh, events around um, cultural activities that people do and things that we're gonna wanna take with us as we go out and explore the stars. And so all of those things are amazing ways to celebrate Yuri's Night. And I wanna see more people posting online and expressing that the things that they're doing are gonna be part of space culture uh, as we move off planet. And this is an opportunity for us to explore those things and celebrate them all together as one unified space kind species. Now, if you are in the Los Angeles or even the Space Coast area, I highly encourage you to try and attend these events. You'll have an opportunity to rub elbows with industry insiders and lovers of space exploration like we all are. But if you're like me and you can't make it, you can still bid on one of those awesome items and know that you're helping families in need. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm gonna try to get back to my regularly scheduled video on Sundays at 11 a.m. Central Time. It's kind of crazy to me how exhausting it is even just to stand here with my walker and shoot a video, but I will say I have noticed a lot of progress every single day. So, you know, I've, I'm only about two weeks out from the surgery as of this recording, and the knee is already starting to flex a little bit more. The swelling in the leg is going down, but it's definitely, um, still an adjustment so doing my best to bring you content but I did want to let you know about this because the event is coming up pretty quickly here again really bummed that I can't go if you don't already know this about me I'm actually from the Los Angeles area um, and so I was really looking forward to you know kind of having that nostalgia of being back at home so to speak um, my parents don't live there anymore they live in Portland now anyway uh, but Hopefully the next time, although next year, like I mentioned, they are gonna be having their celebration in Texas for the total solar eclipse. And I'm really excited for that because uh, I actually covered a total solar eclipse in my second news job. This was in Medford, Oregon, but I covered it from Salem, Oregon. So it was like a special assignment. I got to travel and go live before and after and I even you know made a, a video about it which I'm actually gonna I might as well just roll it um, to show you guys because it was it was kind of a cool package you can see me as a little bit of a green reporter but um, if you've never seen a total solar eclipse definitely try to get in the band of totality um, it's wild you know people are screaming crying it gets very primal and uh, this, this next one next year is supposed to be pretty long. So it's really cool that at least it's here in Texas. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be walking by then. Uh, knock on wood, fingers crossed. Please, please. Um, 
yeah, so I'm excited for that. So enjoy this video. I'm trying to make these videos a little bit longer. I've been told by some of my YouTube mentors to make longer videos. And I, I actually liked this package. So let's roll the tape. About 1,200 people gathered here to watch the eclipse with this beautiful backdrop. But when that totality period came around and they took their glasses off, it sounded like this. It was literally awesome. It was awe inspiring. I've never seen anything quite like it. It was incredible. It was a little bit scary. It was like kind of primal in a weird way, like it made everyone yell. The entire sky went grayish, bluish. It looked like a sunset was happening everywhere all around you. It got completely dark and, and, and then it got cool and then the corona was there and it, it, it was it was awe inspiring. Even pets were affected by the changes taking place all around them during the eclipse. Well, as it started to get darker, they went underneath our chairs and they were sound they went asleep. To sleep. Many people brought their own cameras, putting their photography skills to the test. It was difficult. I, I had to. I was snapping, snapping, trying, trying, and and I, I could see that a few of them worked. I got I think two on the way in and two on the way out that worked. It was a fulfilled wish for many. I've been waiting my whole life to see one of these. There was one in England in 1999, and I missed it, and so there was no way I was going to miss this. It's it's something someone. If if you get a chance in your lifetime, do this. Yeah in a new hobby of eclipse chasing for others. I'm already looking at 2024. Oh my <laughs> it's going to be in Texas. In Salem, Eliana Sheriff.